University School of Medicine in Istanbul, Turkey, completed his psychiatric training um, at the Brockton VA um, in, in child psychiatry at uh, Mass General. He served as director of psychiatric services at the Shriners Hospital for Children in Boston and um, is staffed at the um, MGH Bresler Program for Autism and Pediatric Psychopharmacology. Uh, his research focuses on novel treatments for autism spectrum disorder across the lifespan. Current treatments focus on near infrared LED light to improve core features associated with autism, including social cognition and executive function. Uh, he also focuses on psychiatric disorder and long-term outcomes among children who experience severe burns. Um, he's a member of the media committee for the American Academy of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry and regular presents, presents at national meetings. So we welcome him for um, a great talk and really interesting new treatment uh, for children with autism. Thank you very much for that kind uh, introduction, Dr. Fry. Let me uh, share my screen and um, uh, then let's get uh, started. So uh, can you see uh, this? Yes. Yes. All right. So um, um, thank you for uh, logging in and, and staying logged in uh, to the symposium, it was which dedicated and devoted souls at uh, the Brain Foundation. They made possible um, for my colleagues um, to, and I to conduct these projects and investigate ways to improve the lives of our patients and their families um, who live with autism spectrum disorders. Innovation and curiosity in, in service um, um, of, of, of our patients and families needs friends and support, especially with the limited resources available out there now. And, and these resources are further uh, <laughs> limited during this pandemic we're in, um, which makes help and support extended by the Brain Foundation ever so more meaningful and, and, and vital to this endeavors. And um, in which I also hope everybody is doing well in, 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 in your places um, um, during this uh, COVID pandemic. In the next half hour, I'll, uh, I hope to address, address my part in this uh, symposium packed with a lot of um, cutting edge information. Um, so, and I'm very excited to share <clears throat> our recent findings of a novel treatment approach, as you mentioned, is uh, transcranial photobiomodulation, which is a, um, yeah, it is a tongue twister. So um, in uh, um, my uh, disclosures, I'm going to uh, review uh, um, the, some somatic treatments um, that are not, uh, they are off-label, they are not approved. Um, for uh, use in, um, in patient care uh, in children um, by FDA. So before I talk about the transcranial photobiomodulation, um, let me um, quickly remind, let me quickly remind ourselves about the autism spectrum disorder. This is a lifelong, uh, it's a um, development, neurodevelopmental condition that affects up to 2% of uh, youth. Um, and with um, has a lifelong course of uh, deficits in social awareness, social salience, and um, results in uh, reciprocal communication problems, uh, leading to difficulties in socialization, with, um, and comes with a host of restrictive interests, uh, repetitive behaviors, and um, atypical sensory reactions that interfere with efficient function and so on. To this date, uh, there exist no uh, treatments um, that address the core features of autism spectrum disorder. Instead, current uh, treatment approaches uh, target associated comorbidities um, such as ADHD or mood and anxiety disorders. Um, recent imaging studies uh, now implicate some disruptions of activity in certain brain regions structures and their connectivity uh, to other areas, again, within the brain. Collectively, these areas are involved in mediating the social cognition tasks. Um, uh, of the several implicated areas, the anterior cingulate cortex, um, uh, and particularly the, 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 the dorsal part and uh, perigenual portions are shown to um, be involved in assessing social salience, uh, social processing, and um, um, and the so, um, then this um, awareness of the social state of 
self and others and uh, emotional regulation. In our patients with autism spectrum disorder, these areas tend to be functioning um, out of sync or in, uh, in, at slower pace in comparison to the other areas in the brain. And, um, and if there was a way to selectively you know, increase uh, the activity of these areas, perhaps we could affect the change. Um, and there comes the uh, light. Um, one approach that may offer such an advantage is light. Use of light or electromagnetic waves in, um, in medical field is not a new concept. We are all familiar with the light therapy for uh, seasonal affective disorder. And even before that though, the um, various wavelengths of light were, have been used in, um, in, in various uh, um, um, medical fields and um, uh, for uh, various medical conditions. And um, for ranging from uh, the, vitamin D metabolism, ranging from uh, treatment of a um, newborn jaundice um, to, to assessment of um, burn wound, uh, the depth um, of uh, burn um, injury, burn wound, and, um, uh, and in, uh, now um, also used in, um, in some of the diagnostic approaches um, as a, a near-infrared spectroscopy in a, um, um, a, um, non, um, a more benign way of looking into brain function in infants, for example. Now, what is the core of the transcranial biomodulation, uh, what the photobiomodulation? It is, so first off, all that is light is not visible. It's in, um, in fact, most light is invisible, um, at least to the um, um, human eye. So this is the photo part. So the, um, in this wide range, wide infinite range of um, electromagnetic waves, it is a mere speck uh, that the pods in our eyes are, uh, can actually detect. The energy transmitted in the light uh, it, it, uh, particle, it triggers activity in its target, and thus it, med it mediates the effects of that light on that target. For example, in the eyes, that would be the vision. The wavelength of this light, it determines the energy that uh, the, uh, the, 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 the light particle carries. And each pod in our little eyes, uh, there are these little um, um, receptors in a way in our eyes, they get activated at different energy levels. And that's how we perceive different colors and their counters, so the shapes, and, 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 uh, and that's how vision occurs. Uh, red light in this uh, range here, this is the, you know, uh, so the red light has the longest wavelength uh, and purple as the shortest wavelength. Anything beyond this is not visible to the eye. And um, now, e though, what is, so the near infrared light, which is this um, right below the red light range, uh, which is, not visible to the eye, as I said, is still um, um, uh, able to penetrate into skin and skull tissue. And um, in more than, an, um, in, in some meaningful amount, huh? um, and it, um, it can penetrate into the tissue. And then during this though, it is not, you know, it, it, it's a non-thermal, like it's not generating heat um, 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 or, or, um, or any problems like that, but it is visible to the mitochondria, um, which is a part, in, I mean, earlier, uh, my, uh, my colleague talked about the mitochondrial disorders and in that the, 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 the mitochondria being the factory of the neuron, it, as it gets activated by this, as it picks up on this light and gets activated at this rate, the, what follows is a cascade of um, a cascade of uh, uh, chemical reactions and um, and 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 it results in a um, activation of the metabolism um, and uh, which is the so which forms the bio part like the the, the target of this light and. Uh, and there f follows the um, in, um, increased cellular activity and gene transcription and a change in that cell's activity and behavior in a way. 
So hence is the modulation. And there comes the photobiomodulation. And the transcranial part is that the light is uh, exposed transcranially or outside of the cranium into it. Um, the mechanism there, uh, postulated mechanism, how the mitochondrion gets activated is there are uh, cytochromes or uh, um, en uh, um, um, enzymes in the, in the mitochondrion that uh, um, respond to um, differently to certain um, wavelengths of light. And, um, and in these, the, as the light energy penetrates into it, it displaces a part of the molecule, thus activating that enzyme, which results in the um, uh, um, ensuing metabolic changes. So now what happens then as a result? Well, we, um, the, the resulting effects of this activation uh, may include several um, uh, uh, processes that are now uh, postulated or theorized. Well, what we believe is, is that it may reduce uh, the uh, pro-inflammatory uh, cytokines in these, in these cells. In other words, um, it may reduce the inflammation, which is um, uh, um, considered to be um, part of, uh, if you know, um, to, to um, con considered to be contributing to um, autism spectrum uh, degenesis or other psychiatric conditions as well. Um, it may stimulate uh, this uh, light activation may stimulate neurogenesis and neuroprotection as a result as well. So uh, that's how we uh, think it results in um, neuro neuron adaptation or uh, rejuvenation um, in, the, in the long run. So uh, now these aspects of uh, the near infrared light has been of interest and, um, and it was previously or more recently studied um, or explored um, by our, our colleagues and um, who conducted a four week uh, clinical study with, um, and used an ultra pulse monochromatic, that is, you know, a, 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 a one set wavelength of light within the visible range though they used. And, um, and it was delivered to the, the sides of the, the, uh, the brain, the, to the temporal region and the base of the skull. And it, they found about 81% of um, uh, response or improvement uh, measured by the uh, by um, um, scales, uh, uh, clinician rated scales, and uh, um, um, in, in in their patients. A little more detail on that. Uh, so this that was a double blind uh, clinical trial. They had 40 um, uh, uh, patients. Uh, five to 17 year olds, who all of whom had a diagnosis of autism spectrum disorder. And the light, again, um, uh, as I mentioned, was in, within the visible range. And um, they used twice a week, five minutes of treatments for about four weeks. And that was sufficient to see uh, for them the following results. That, that is a, in, a significant and a meaningful decline in um, um, irritability measures of um, uh, that, uh, uh, or irritability symptoms of their patients. They targeted not the core features of autism spectrum, but the irritability that associates um, uh, commonly and presents in, uh, commonly in our patients with autism spectrum disorder. So, and uh, they also found uh, about 80, so the, uh, in the clinician rated um, 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 uh, scales, they found about an 81 percent. So 17 patients on the uh, on the on the treatment arm uh, uh, that attained a very meaningful improvement in their um, um, in their um, autism related irritability. What we did more recently, um, uh, what we con uh, uh, concluded, uh, was an open label single group design study. Um, where we uh, targeted the core deficits in autism spectrum disorder in our adult patients. 
and um, uh, where um, we used our primary measurements as the social responsiveness scale and the clinical global impression. Um, the social responsiveness scale is a self-rated um, and informant rated scale and clinical global impression is a clinician rated scale. And we also looked at um, and the overall function of our patients um, and, um, and also uh, we were curious about the ADHD um, or attention deficit hyperactivity disorder symptoms, um, particularly among those um, who had that comorbidity, which is a highly comorbid condition um, in, in autism spectrum disorder. And we defined prior to study, the responder would be you know, one who attains at least 25% or more reduction in their uh, social responsiveness scale. And, um, um, and, those, and at the same time would attain at least um, two or less, or so a marked improvement in clinical global impression was rated by um, um, the study uh, clinician. Um, uh, it was a, uh, we uh, considered twice a week uh, treatment um, um, for eight weeks. Uh, the reason this is different from that four weeks, I think, is, well, one, at the time we were not aware of that study ongoing, but two, um, our colleagues who have uh, explored the uh, uh, transcranial photobiomodulation in uh, patients with depression um, and with really uh, promising results had uh, used this approach um, of um, um, eight uh, uh, twice weekly treatments. We started with 20 minutes and plan to go to 25 and to 30 um, with every other week or so increments. And the our, our patients uh, traveled to the uh, hospital. This is pre-COVID era, of course. And this is what the device looked like here, uh, which was um, you know, placed uh, to um, the uh, um, frontal uh, region of the, of, uh, of the brain, of the skull, and uh, in, in, in held in place with a headband or a net and, um, and while the patients rested uh, for that duration of time. The, um, we had, um, so uh, 12 uh, uh, patients um, um, were enrolled and uh, screened and enrolled and um, 11 met the uh, participation criteria. One, per, one patient uh, withdrew uh, consent uh, because of uh, some scheduled demands that just changed. Um, so uh, 10 were enrolled into the study, but the, per the, the, the person who withdrew had the, completed the um, initial test though. So we included um, uh, that person in our safety analyses as well. And um, here are the, you know, our uh, participants were mostly um, you know, male and, uh, and the, with a medium, um, with an average age, uh, 30 years old. Um, and we, um, in, in, in our, um, you know, participants who, um, that we included in uh, efficacy analyses, um, the highest comorbidity we found was the ADHD, which is uh, consistent with the rest of our clinical uh, population that we serve, and um, and the and all of our patients were on some adjunct medications, uh, mostly prescribed uh, with the stimulant meds and then the antidepressants and antipsychotics coming uh, behind. Uh, this uh, um, uh, during the study participation, we um, yeah, we avoided any medication changes, um, and if there was any need for a medication change, uh, we would uh, we would have um, um, discontinued the uh, study uh, for for uh, for that person. Uh, but there was no incident of that need um, um, during their participation. And so all um, enrolled uh, and started the treatment, except for one, um, completed the study. And at the end point here, what we found um, that our patients' uh, social responsiveness scale uh, totals, they dropped significantly. The, uh, and this, this was a statistically significant uh, improvement, yes. Um, but I must mention this, uh, that the, um, so it dropped from 104 to 73, it is huge. But it is still within the clinically meaningful range. That is, um, it is still um, the 60 uh, is the agreed uh, cutoff point. Uh, so our patients at the end of their participation were still met, uh, dealing or struggling with uh, these core features, 
but had attained a, a, a clinically significant improvement. And we saw the similar improvement in the subscales of the, uh, of the social responsiveness um, 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 scale, that is the, uh, the social communication, the re repetitive ritualistic behaviors, uh, social motivation and awareness. Um, 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 so four out of five subscales also attained a clinically um, uh, statistically significant um, improvements. And um, here is, you know, give, um, having a, you know, a small sample allows us to look at, you know, individually um, the improvements or change in the scores. And um, so uh, there was, so we see this precipitant decline. Um, and um, now with, uh, um, at endpoint, um, we also uh, saw a, the global assessment functioning uh, uh, um, and, uh, C, and the clinical rate, clinician rate of CGI scores um, were remarkable too. Um, so seven uh, patients attained a, a two or less, um, that a score of two or less, which is very remarkable or remarkable improvement in, in their um, clinical condition compared to baseline. And, um, and the global assessment of functioning, um, there was about you know, more than 10 points increase, which it represents in the, GAF, uh, in the GAF continuum or the global assessment of functioning scale continuum an improve, um, a, is a, a, um, a categorical improvement. Um, um, that it, for, so a categorical improvement in the overall function too. Um, in our secondary measures, uh, looking at the ADHD uh, symptoms, we saw a statistically significant drop in the severity. But I must mention the from 34 to 28 uh, or 29 is not a clinically very it's not a clinically significant drop. However, it can you know we all we also know the um, the ADHD comorbid with autism spectrum disorder tends to represent more robust form of this condition of, of ADHD itself. So even a small improvement like this might be meaningful, but we need bigger um, uh, sample, uh, and bigger participation to see whether that holds up. Um, what we, we did not you know, um, um, expect, what we found was the, an, an overall improvement in the executive functions that were um, uh, um, rated by uh, again uh, um, self-rated um, self-rated scale, uh, the behavior rating inventory of executive function, and um, we saw, we found uh, or we noticed saw statistically significant improvement in subscales and in all the um, um, uh, sub measures indexes indices of uh, this uh, brief, which suggests an overall improvement in executive function. Um, in, in, in uh, following the, our patients' participation. Um, so uh, in the end, five out of 10 patients, uh, 10 part, uh, patients met the responder criteria. Um, the, uh, the CGI was, oh, it's not six, it's seven, I'm sorry. Um, but, uh, but five met this uh, responder criteria in both, uh, um, in both responder criteria. There were no serious adverse events. Nobody had to drop out of the study because of a side effect. Um, there were um, um, transient uh, um, side effect incidents. One patient had a headache. One patient had a difficulty sleeping after first uh, um, exposure, uh, after their first uh, treatment episode, uh, which then spontaneously resolved. Um, one person experienced warmth at the application application site again up, um, at the first uh, um, um, uh, um, uh, first uh, treatment uh, and then got um, used to but we captured it as a side effect because um, the, the the patient spontaneously raised the point what we found was a remarkable adherence rate of 98 percent which is really um, uh, which is really remarkable I think in in, in um, uh, adherence or um, to treatment, um, which is a problem, a common problem in, in, in the realm of psychiatry. So um, based on these findings, we uh, concluded that um, transcranial photobiomodulation is, yes, it's a non-invasive and is a potentially safe intervention. 
it's uh, promising in treating core features of autism spectrum disorder and associating executive function deficits. So, and it is uh, well received and tolerated among our patients, and it is feasible to explore it. So, uh, based on these findings, we um, you now the future studies would need to now focus on um, exploring uh, um, uh, transcranial photobiomodulation. A, um, a, a effect, efficacy, and safety in uh, double-blind uh, randomized clinical trials. So um, this is where the support is vital. Um, this is the, the, the point um, that determines whether all we hope and aspire uh, will be made reality. And this is what the, uh, the Brain Foundation is, is, is making possible um, there um, and by supporting this investigation of these interventions in service of, of improvements in lives of those that surround us. With the generous and vital support from the uh, Brain Foundation, we are now um, launching a randomized and uh, um, a double-blind clinical trial, which is the gold standard to investigate any new interventions if, um, Validity. This study is uh, is going to be conducted via telemedicine too, and uh, which um, during the current COVID nineteen pandemic we find it fortuitous that a telemedicine um, actually is a valid approach, works well, enables us to um, uh, to reach those that otherwise we can't, um, and 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 it allows us to conduct these uh, studies safely too. Um, what we will be uh, uh, looking at in this study is the, uh, so it's at eight, it's going to be an eight week uh, uh, long, double blind, sham controlled, um, randomized clinical trial um, where patients um, 18 to 59 uh, year old, so adult patients with autism spectrum disorder will uh, be enrolled to receive daily in home transcranial uh, TPBM treatments. Uh, during this period. We are going to follow a fixed uh, titration and, um, and, and we'll start with the 20 minutes to 30, 40 to 50, which is um, um, a longer exposure than um, our previous study, but again is uh, supported by, um, uh, by findings from our colleagues who, all, again, who also explore this um, um, intervention in, in patients with depression. And um, we will uh, follow our uh, uh, patients' progress during regularly scheduled visits and, um, and, um, and, and will include measurements of, again, a social responsiveness scale and the, uh, the clinical global impression. Uh, so both patient and clinician rated scales and our response will be based on uh, or the response definition will be a patient who has attained 25% or more reduction in their um, in these um, uh, scales that measure the core features of autism spectrum disorder. Now, one thing I have learned in, in life is that a genius is in the company you keep. New things and innovation needs friends and uh, hardworking people. None of this work would be possible without the tremendous people I have the good fortune to work with and uh, the support by the, the Brain Foundation. I'm blessed with the opportunity to have Dr. Biederman, Dr. Joshi as my mentors. And, um, and, and finally, I, I thank all my patients and their families who uh, place their trust and confidence in our abilities to care for them and their loved ones and for their most important asset, time, uh, that they give us uh, that allows us to learn and investigate ways to improve the care for them and all others. Um, so um, with that, I'll uh, pause and uh, hear uh, questions and, 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 and comments, please. And sh I should stop sharing, correct? Yes. Yeah, I think um, in the sake of time, if you could answer, answer the questions uh, through the chat for the Q&A, it would be great um, just uh, because of time limitations. Absolutely. But Absolutely. That was a wonderful presentation Thank and you. really a promising treatment. So yeah, we look forward to hearing more. So, all right, great. I will remain in the chat. Okay. So great. Now um, I have 